Peace, y'all, and welcome to Oddly Familiar, where we take a look at songs that are parody, tribute, or even just ripped off. And when I say rip off, I mean that they didn't have permission and did it anyways. The only thing I am going to say about this episode, the number one is my favorite by far. So let's get this episode underway. Our first up, number 10, is from Spider-Man and Venom, Maximum Carnage. This is the boss fight theme. This is one of the most submitted songs on our entire page. And we have received plenty of comments about it, so I think it's about time. I also want to give a shout out to the very first person to comment this, Gustavo Borealis. Here is the Black Sabbath song named The Mob Rules. The Mob Rules was released in 1981 and Maximum Carnage in 1994. The game's soundtrack was written and produced by American rock group Green Jello, but due to the limited storage capacity of the Super Nintendo and Genesis cartridges, the soundtrack was not recorded music, but computerized renditions of the songs. Number 9 is from probably the most classic boxing game of all time, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, the opening menu music. Composed by Koji Kondo and released in 1987. Ever since I was a kid, this theme song has been familiar, but I never really thought about it until now. With a little research, I found this one rather easily. The old Gillette theme song from 1954, titled Look Sharp, Be Sharp. If you look up this full song, you will find lyrics on it, and it talks about looking sharp and being sharp. The company Gillette makes razors, so it's pretty much just a promotional song about shaving your face. In at number 8, we have one from the game Battletoads and Double Dragon. It's the title screen music, composed by David Wise and released in 1993. This one is a viewer submission, thanks to Shadow96433 for pointing this one out. Now usually when a viewer submits a song, I go and listen to make sure. Well this one here, I didn't need to double check. I recognize the tune on the title screen instantly. Here is the 1981 song, Girls on Film by Duran Duran. This isn't the first time Double Dragon has appeared on Oddly Familiar, and this is not the first time Duran Duran has appeared on Oddly Familiar, but it's the first time for Battletoads. I'm just curious to the connection. What does Girls on Film have to do with Battletoads and Double Dragon? Up next, we have a double whammy. Number seven is held by Banjo-Kazooie, and the song is titled Gruntilda's Lair, composed by Grant Kirkhope and released in 1998. The first part of this double whammy is a viewer submission. Retro Collector 89 pointed this one out. They are right, and it makes sense because Banjo-Kazooie is about a bear, and the song in question is named Teddy Bear's Picnic, composed in 1907 by John Walter Bratton. 
If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise. The second part of this double whammy, number six, is held by none other than Jason Voorhees. This song comes from the Commodore 64 game, Friday the 13th. Now for Banjo-Kazooie, I understand, but I find it funny to include this on Friday the 13th. Number 5 is from a classic. This is also one of the best Zelda games ever made. The Legend of Zelda on the NES. And it's the Dungeon Theme Song. Composed by Koji Kondo and released in 1986. Recently there were a few comments left by viewers, and while I already knew this one, I still want to say thanks for the comments. Here is Deep Purple's 1969 song, titled April. This entry may only be a small part of the song, but it's a cool one and I thought worth a spot on the list. Our number 4 entry is from yet another NES game, but you have to beat the game first because it comes from the end credits of Metroid, composed by Hirokazu Tanaka and released in 1986. This one may just be a coincidence, but sections do sound a bit similar to the song Carn Evil 9 by Emerson, Lake and Palmer. The reason why I say this one may just be a coincidence, because it reminds me of another song that I am yet to place, so maybe that will be covered in a future episode once I narrow it down, but for now, that's our unlucky number four. Number three is from a game that likes to parody, so this one is no real surprise. Here is James Pond 2, composed by Richard Joseph and released in 1991. As I stated, James Pond loves to parody other pop culture material, so you may be thinking James Bond, and you would be wrong. It's Robocop. James Pond 2's full title is James Pond 2, codename Robocop. And of course, on the Super Nintendo, it's named Super James Pond, because Nintendo had to name everything Super. Our number two spot is another viewer submission. This one actually comes from one of my favorite YouTubers, Larry Bundy Jr., AKA Guru Larry. He mentioned Streets of Rage 2 and the Baseball Arena, composed by Yuzo Koshiro and released in 1992. Now what Larry said it's identical to is Shaman's 1990 song, Move Any Mountain. I do have to admit, I didn't hear this one until it was brought to my attention, so a big thanks to Guru Larry for the submission and the comment. I know Guru Larry comments absolutely everywhere, so it's not a rare thing, but it is pretty cool to know one of my favorite YouTubers has watched an episode. Our top spot is held by Police Knots. 
I covered this game in a previous episode because the two main characters look familiar. And well, as soon as I turned on the game, I heard this. Now that one is more than oddly familiar. That is the exact same notes and synthesizer as another Konami game by Hideo Kojima. You may have played it before. On the PlayStation 1, Metal Gear Solid. It's only the intro on Metal Gear, but on Police Knots you can hear a full length version. And the song appears on most menu screens. Metal Gear came out after, but with Police Knots only being released in Japan, I think most people will associate this tune with Metal Gear. Now a funny thing happened to me while researching this. After I played Police Knots and heard the song, I looked it up on YouTube and I scrolled down to the comments to see how many people would be talking about Metal Gear. And look who I see. Kenneth Eaton. A viewer that has made previous episodes of Oddly Familiar left a comment four years ago. Maybe Kenneth forgot about this one, but this is the top spot in this episode. So episode 13 is in the books. I really liked some of the oddly familiar songs in this episode, with Police Knots being my favorite one. Not only because it's Metal Gear, but the way I found it. It's now what I call an oddly familiar moment. I heard something, and it clicked. If you guys have any oddly familiar moments, let me know in the comments. I know I can't be the only one. But for now, until then, I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace. Mm -hmm.